Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session here today. Um, I'm really excited to be introducing our panel here as we talk about parent engagement. On our expert panel here today, I'm excited to introduce Karen Fadham from Surrey School District. Um, as an educator, uh, bringing her perspective and experiences uh, and research, so we're excited to have her on. Uh, we also have uh, Wanny uh, Hersey from Bullis Charter School. She's the superintendent there, sharing her experience as well. Um, we know how important parent engagement is. Um, my name is Lauren Stafford. Um, I'm a former educator and administrator myself, and I'm an account executive here with Fresh Grade Education. Um, we are going to be sharing those deep perspectives, the importance around parent engagement, and uh, some new ways for making that happen. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and invite uh, our first guest on. Karen, Karen, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I sure can. Good. Awesome. Kicking us off. Sorry. We are uh, ready to roll. Okay, thank you so much. So I'm Karen, hi, thanks for joining us. I thought we should start by talking about what we're talking about when we talk about parent engagement. I have found through my years as a teacher and in doing research that a lot of people always jump to parents are in the school volunteering or helping with homework. And we're really talking about something deeper. We talk about parent engagement. When parents are engaged, it means that they're part of an ongoing conversation about the learning. It means that we're doing things to build two-way communication so that parents move from just receiving information to being part of that conversation. And parent engagement really means that parents, in the way that they're either uh, conversing with their child or communicating with the classroom teacher or being in the school, they really are having an impact on student learning. So I really invite people to think about what parent engagement means to them and try to move to a more deeper definition than sometimes we're used to thinking about. So uh, what, what happened for me is in my classroom, I was using digital portfolios as a way to uh, just capture learning in different ways. And what I really quickly found is it was really helping my parents do exactly what I just described. They were part of the conversation. They were part of the goal setting. They were doing things at home that were attached to what we were doing at school. And I really started to think digital portfolios have an opportunity to bridge this gap that's been persisting in schools and home for a long time. We've known for a long time that uh, families matter, that parents matter, yet we just sometimes struggle on how we can build a relationship and move away from just parents receiving information. And when we think about digital portfolios, what's interesting is it's not just about what we're communicating home that helps to build that parent engagement, is digital portfolios are also helping parents transfer that learning between school and outside of school, whether it be the home or when they're the grocery store, whether they're on field trips. So it's it, it's doing two things. It's building that communication, which we know works to impact student learning, and it's helping to support parents in learning with their child at home. So I was really uh, quite curious about all this, and I decided to do research as part of my master's degree on digital portfolios and parent engagement. And I was looking at what do parents appreciate about digital portfolios and also what could teachers do in their use of digital portfolios so that parents are more engaged in the process and that the experience is really positive and meaningful for both parties involved. So what I did was a qualitative case study and I worked with parents um, through a survey, through interviews, and through looking at what teachers were putting on the portfolio. And over six months, I collected data with the parents. And I basically asked them what they appreciate about digital portfolios and what they feel could impact the experience. What could teachers be doing so that they do feel really part of the process? And what, what I found, and it, it aligns with other research in the field as well, is on the next slide, please, Lauren. <laughs> Thank you. or I can just talk about it. So what we found, or I found, and again, it is in other research as well, is that 
parents deeply appreciate the timely communication on portfolios. Uh, they often said things like, it was so nice to know that day or that week how my child was progressing in math or that they had created that during an art project and not hearing about it two weeks later. And all parents absolutely loved the variety of evidence. They did like pictures, but with portfolios where you could have a picture, you can have notes, you can have video, just different things really help parents get the bigger picture. And parents really love the fact that yes, they could have a voice, but so their, their child has a voice on the portfolio. Even young students, it could be that they helped choose what goes in their portfolio or they could be directly commenting. And then there's that direct teacher feedback. Uh, overwhelmingly in my research, what parents all said time and time again was that they just finally felt really, really connected to what was happening at school. And even if they weren't yet commenting on the portfolio, even if they weren't yet using what was on there to help um, do homework at home, they knew what was going on. They could easily start a conversation with their child. And when they were out, uh, out and about, they could draw their attention to things that they knew they were learning at school. And they really appreciated that connection and being able to transfer that learning from school to other places. So I also found some things that parents felt would help them participate more in the part portfolio, use the information on the portfolio and really things that teachers could do to make the process more meaningful for them. And so in general, parents really love to know why are you using portfolios? And when I was a communicating student learning helping teacher working with other teachers that were implementing portfolios, the first question I almost always asked is why are you using portfolios? What's your intention? What's your purpose? And in some school districts, you're using portfolios for, for reporting. It's replacing report cards. And in other districts, it's a supplement. Some, school, some teachers use them really for that student voice piece. But parents really appreciate clearly knowing what you're using it for and what you might expect from them. Are you hoping that they will comment on the portfolio? Or are you feeling really great if they're just having a conversation about the portfolio with their child? Parents were asking for that clearly from the very beginning and felt that that would really help them moving forward. And parents also thought that it was great that portfolios were only part of what teachers were doing, so they didn't feel really overwhelmed by just one tool. And they really appreciate when teachers clearly set out what the curriculum connection will be. So for example, uh, uploading pictures and videos is great, but if parents aren't sure what the purpose of it was, how it ties to their child's learning, or how it can help their child move forward, it could be a little bit overwhelming. So in generally, those were the things that parents shared that teachers could use to help guide their practice to effectively use portfolios. And I just wanted to share a couple quotes. I have many, many quotes from my research, and I know that a lot of other people do as well. I just think it really speaks to how, uh, how much par teachers parents value the work that teachers are putting in to the portfolios. And especially I found for parents who work multiple jobs or they can't get to the school for pick up and drop off. I, I mean, I had a couple of parents that actually cried. They finally felt so connected to the school and they didn't feel left out anymore. So I just wanted to leave those few quotes from uh, my research and thank Fresh Grade for inviting me to the webinar. And I see that my time has very quickly flown by, so I will pass it on. It's always amazing how quickly um, time flies, but um, such great insights and you know the feedback really uh, speaks so deeply, um, you know about the impact and the engagement and you know the importance here. So um, thank you. Um, and with that, we're um, inviting uh, Wendy on. Wendy, are you there? I am there. Can you hear me? Fantastic. Yes, we sure can. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this as well. I'm really honored to be able to share um, the Bullis experience. Just as um, a, setting the context, Bullis is a K-8 school. We're a project-based learning school committed to the 21st century learning and project-based learning, obviously. We're a STEAM school and we integrate design thinking processes. So in order to ensure that our 
um, meaningfully growing and achieving in all these areas, we have something called focus learning goals, and they're going to um, be referenced as FLGs in my document. And FLGs are these personalized goals that are academic, social, emotional, behavioral, personal, including passions. Um, and um, the reason why we have this for every single student, uh, grades kindergarten to eight, is that we really are committed to demonstrating that students are achieving not only in academics. So we've always been looking for a platform to better communicate what we've been trying to do. And so um, I wanted to share with you in 2015 uh, some data that we got back that was sort of disturbing to us. This is on a scale of one to five. And while these scores may not seem really low to you, it was not um, good for us because normally we're used to just you know above four at all times and to see some of these scores dipping um, down to threes really brought home to us that in spite of what we thought we were doing well in the classroom and what students were achieving and how they were progressing obviously the parents were not feeling the same and they were not um, you know understanding what was happening and so at that point we were thinking you know obviously just um, using um, Facebook and sending home sheets and pictures it's like not really working well how do we capture everything on one platform so that we can demonstrate progress throughout a year two years three years and so um, this is what really drove us to, uh, to sign on with fresh grade because it was the only thing we saw that met all our needs to really um, demonstrate and communicate to the parents how students are growing as a whole child, not just in one area and in with one snapshot. So um, we also, um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, sorry. Um, did uh, 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 several things to uh, ensure that our parents understood what we were trying to do so we reframe the whole process and just like Karen was saying previously it's so important for parents to understand why you're doing what you're doing uh, what their expectations are what's their role and um, ensure that they understand what some of the best practices are so in spite um, of the fact that we had parent teacher conferences to set up the goals together you know, collaboratively in the fall, uh, in spite of the fact that we reported out three times during the year and then had another parent teacher conference on the goals, the parents were still feeling like, I don't know what's going on. And sometimes they just wanted to know what the score was, or they just expected something to be done in a way that perhaps the student was not progressing, uh, but had moved into another direction, or the teacher was thinking, no, I think he's actually doing really well. This is, he's right on track. So the expectations were not aligned. Uh, they didn't quite understand perhaps the purpose. Um, so, uh, and they certainly didn't know how to engage. And so we had, um, um, uh, parent info nights to really set that tone at the beginning of the year and demonstrate and show and have people talk, parents, uh, students and staff members share best practices. In the classroom, the teachers also um, decided to do a, a few things. One was instead of just themselves posting on the progress of a student, because many of these goals are interdisciplinary, even if they're a writing goal, you can see writing not just in language arts, but obviously in science, it could also happen in a, a PE journal. We wanted to make sure that more than one teacher was collaborating and reporting out so that the parents could see how uh, multi-dimensional this was in terms of what their student was doing and progressing. And so fresh grade allowed us to do that, and that was awesome. The other thing was in the classroom, as you can see on the left, the teachers would literally teach the students what does a good post look like? How do you improve upon posts? How do you show evidence so that your parents can understand and so that it really reflects what you're trying to communicate? And then last but not least, the teachers also modeled for the parents, how do you give good feedback? How do you not just say, oh, wonderful, or you're so perfect, um, but you know, really helps uh, the, the parents um, work on the things that we value, risk taking and learning from mistakes and having a growth mindset. So having done all that, if you can go to the next slide, you will see that then, actually the next slide actually shows some examples of the teacher modeling uh, good feedback. And if you look to the right, um, the, the teacher actually 
who was oh can you make sure you um you know, also post a picture of the rubric and then you see the next post right away from the parent going, oh yeah, you know, and talks about the rubric right away. And so it helps direct the focus on not just, oh, where the child is or whether they're doing good or badly, but you know, where they are in the growth process. Uh, so you can see that the teacher is using the platform not only to give feedback to the students, but also to help model good responses and growth mindset to, for the parents. So what I love, if you can go to the next slide, please, is that, oops, uh, that um, not only does fresh grade help with the academic goals, as I said, but you can see on the left, um, the student is working on goals in music. They work on it in drama. We have a lot of other classes like art and uh, Mandarin. Uh, language. This, they set goals in those areas and when I read this post I didn't even know there was such a thing as a black belt and recorder but obviously this student has set that um, for herself uh, which is wonderful and getting great encouragement from the parents and I love the one on the right because here is a personal goal that the student has set for himself in terms of keeping his desk clean and um, organized and you see some humor even from the posts from the parents saying hey we can work on this at home as well and then in terms of feedback, you can see that now, um, the next slide, that you have the parents really understanding. Um, this uh, post here on the left is actually um, uh, the Mandarin class, and you can see that the parents are not only appreciating and seeing the growth, but they're able to see how the teacher has really valued and incorporated the student's um, personality. And this one is talking about, oh, I really appreciate how the um, uh, my son's you know humor is able to, in the sense of fun, is uh, incorporated into what he's able to do in the classroom. And that would never happen uh, without something like fresh grade being able to be used to communicate that. And then just like Karen, I have some um, quotes from parents who are really now, you can see, are focused on growth. You can see that they are using the platform to make homeschool um, connections. Um, and so I really, really value what uh, FreshGrade has brought to our school and how it's enhanced um, and in allowed us to have deeper conversations with our parents on student growth. Fantastic, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Um, and Having those different perspectives, I think, is so important, um, and seeing the growth and the engagement um, as an edu as an educator and as a parent, um, I know how hard it can be um, to kind of pull all those pieces together um, on both sides. So um, I'm going to shift over a little bit um, and just talk about uh, fresh grade a little bit and some statistics. Um, you know, uh, some of the things that have driven um, this program for exactly what you guys have talked about here. So um, it, it's that reminder, there's technology everywhere nowadays. And uh, no matter where our parents are, almost everybody has some kind of uh, telephone, cell phone, smartphone, uh, to be able to get things like updates and highlights. Um, I know uh, getting little things like a video uh, of a classroom instruction, teaching uh, my child or um, showing a student how to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough on a math problem um, so we can practice that at home uh, versus uh, you know being able to work with my students on a writing project and developing their skills and the way they're thinking about it. And then the parents seeing that development over time, um, so many powerful tools and things that are right at their fingertips. They don't have to have all different kinds of hardware. Um, again, it can be right there in their pocket, um, getting that instant notification. Um, a couple of things just to talk about. Um, one of the things that I love in terms of feedback is the idea of uh, fresh grade saving time um, with all the different kinds of things out there. Um, we are kind of thinking about that um, piece. Uh, is this taking up more time in the classroom? And um, really, it's the opposite. So 76% of teachers felt that using fresh grade actually is saving them time. Um, and it, the resulting improvements um, are worthwhile. The parents' engagement um, is so worth the effort here. 68% um, of educators felt that it was saving them 30 minutes to hours of time during their work week. Um, and thinking about this, this isn't um, just a teacher taking pictures and sharing things. It's that student engagement piece. Uh, it's them being part of that student ownership, um, being a collaborator in the classroom and sharing those things and having those conversations, which can be so incredibly powerful. So uh, the meaning of full results here again, 
um, connecting that to that student ownership, having them be part of it, you can truly see that sense of pride. So again, 61% of educators surveyed felt that their students' ownership of their learning is improved through the use of the tools here. Promoting parent engagement, 65% of educators agreed that fresh grade improved parent engagement um, across the board. Um, and those are things that can be difficult. Um, again, wanting to make sure that they're seeing in, uh, as we talk about things like incidental and intentional learning, um, it's the, the little things that happen in the classroom around the social, emotional, and behavioral versus just the academic piece and being able to pull those different pieces together. So I love those two pieces really working together and uh, the feedback there. Um, this is another good one um, as we have those conversations about um, you know, parents having technology. Fresh grade customers uh, looking at that distribution um, really is something that's accessible by anyone, whether you're high income or low income. Again, that uh, percent of engaged parents um, are in all of our different ranges from our low income to our uh, um, you know, different ranges here. Um, it's such a powerful um, you know, application here and thinking about how to get these resources, how to get people engage with the platform. It's uh, you know, cross-categorical which I think is important to really point out. Um, a couple of other things uh, kind of just thinking about. So total parent views per month, the average in 2017, 2018 was more than two and a half million. Um, that kind of breaks down 11 average views per month per parent. Um, thinking about the fact that that's 11 times that a parent is logging in and it's kind of like them sitting there listening and seeing their student engaged, interacting, um, seeing the work that they're doing, um, which, is hard to do. Again, putting that um, into sort of a realistic statistic, and that's what we want. We want them to feel connected. We want them to have those deeper conversations with their students about what's happening in the school day. So these pieces really kind of pull those different parts together. Um, so with that being said, kind of pulling all of these different things together, um, we do have a, a couple of questions um, that I'd love to push back to you guys. Um, and there's probably different perspectives, so I'd love for you guys both to kind of weigh in on this. So when you're thinking about um, parent engagement, um, do you guys have ideas or ways, if you have parents that aren't plugged in, any strategies for kind of reaching out? Um, I know we talked a little bit about those parent uh, conferences and um, you know different kinds of things. Um, any suggestions for um, connecting? Um, well, sure, should I want me to talk? Yeah, 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 go for it, jump on in. Uh, well, something that I try to do is always any other communication that goes home, I always try to loop it back to the portfolio. So if I do send home um, even an, a little intern or I don't, different districts call it different things, I always try to give a little bit of information and I always say please also refer to your child's fresh grade portfolio for further evidence of learning and just keep reminding them that no matter what's coming home, the bulk of the evidence and trying to show that progress is always on the portfolio. Uh, sending home prompts for parents, although comments aren't the only way for them to get involved, viewing and going through with their child is great. If you are looking to see those parents involved through the parent portal, they really appreciate what do I do with this, giving them some ideas, what they might say, saying to the student on the parent portal, for example, I like the way you dot, 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 tell me more about what was the hardest part of this for you, um, connecting it to something at home. They really appreciate those prompts and hosting as often as possible, a little uh, fresh grade open house pop in. Sometimes parents are actually having a hard time connecting and they don't want to put their hand up and tell you. But if you say, hey, Wednesday afternoons, we're just going to have a drop by to pop look through the portfolios. Sometimes you'll get a parent come in then and say, oh, by the way, I haven't been able to log on. And then you can help them in that moment. And then they continue to stay involved after that. I love Those it. Those are all really great. If I can just add one thing, we noticed that in the beginning we, you know, sent out an email, told everybody to log in, and then there were some parents who actually, even though we would send them emails, et cetera, and say, hey, you haven't even signed up yet for the year, um, never did. And so what we decided to do was at back to school night, when we have a high number of parents there, we literally, like, that was part of the presentation. We stopped it. We had them pull it out. We walked them through it and had them all logged in at that time. So they were all in one room and got it sort of done. So. Yeah, that's a good idea. Absolutely. Um, and those informational um, nights are so important. Um, and they happen um, oftentimes throughout the year. 
Um, I've seen them done, done creatively with different kinds of presentations and activities where you have parents coming in and out, whether it's uh, back to school night, um, you know, uh, to other kinds of fun uh, educational programming that happens throughout the year with those little reminders as well. Um, I love well, we also idea. put it on the students sometimes. We also say, hey, you know, uh, let's try to reach 100% and go home and remind your parents. So the students are sometimes the best people to get the parents on board. Absolutely. Can I just more about that quickly as well is if you're a teacher and you're using fresh grade and you're not seeing parent comments and you're assuming that that means they're not engaged with the portfolio, maybe find another way to, 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 to find out because. In the many parents I've talked to, sometimes they're not commenting for whatever reason. They're not comfortable, they don't know what to say, but they're looking at that portfolio all the time. They're using the information, they are engaged. It's just, you might not know. So just don't feel bad as a teacher if you're not getting comments. That doesn't prove engagement. Absolutely, um, and that's you know one of the things I think we forget, it's not all about the um, online engagement, it's the, you know, focal point is that conversation around the dinner table um, and hoping that they're engaging in these deeper conversations, not just the comment back and forth, but truly having those conversations about the learning that's happening in the classroom, right? Um, that carryover um, and whether it's a prompt uh, within the program itself or it's a handwritten note with a reminder, um, you know, all kinds of different ways. Um, I love the announcement feature for things like that. Announcements are great for um, when parents are plugged in and they're getting those emails, um, being able to see who's, you know, checked, whether it's a field trip or uh, an announcement, even using them for prompts to ask uh, questions, um, some fun ways to, uh, to engage. Um, so that's fantastic. Excellent. Um, well, I know we are just wrapping up at the end of our time here today. Um, we uh, really appreciate you guys taking time to, you know, come together and really think deeply about this topic. Um, parent engagement is something that um, is so critical. Parents are uh, stakeholders in the in the process in the classroom, um, and being able to pull them in and and have these conversations, um, they're partners in education. I really like that. Um, you know, speaking to that piece of it and uh, appreciate your time uh, in connecting. So um, thank you again for joining us here today. Um, we'd love for you to uh, learn more. If you uh, are someone who is a believer, um, I'm a big passionate person around being a lifelong learner. So uh, we'd love for you to head to our uh, learning, professional learning platform at learning.freshgrade.com. Uh, if you're interested in a demo or like more information, um, you're welcome to reach out. Uh, there's con contact information on the screen. We'd love to connect. Um, we're here for you um, to build capacity and develop those relationships and really open the doors uh, to advancement and learning with your students. So thank you for joining us today and uh, keeping it fresh with Fresh Grade. Thanks for joining us. Fresh with Fresh Grade.